All right, SSL Family Dad was simple, sustainable living, and today we're prepping, priming, and painting the tiny room. All right, welcome back to the tiny room renovation. So today we're uh, just kind of moving things along here with the uh, prepping and priming and painting. So I'm just gonna take you through the process that we're using here to kind of get things, uh, the surfaces all ready, uh, what we're filling, what we're not, and how we're getting everything ready to go here, and then what type of paint we're using to get this, uh, this room all painted. So uh, my daughter has chosen, she wants everything to be nice and white. She likes that nice, clean, kind of modern look. And so everything is white. We're using the same paint for ceiling and walls and doors and trim and everything else is gonna be just this very pure white and then with accents of, of uh, um, black hardware and things like that throughout the room. So um, we'll go ahead and take you guys uh, through the, the process here. Uh, well, let's get started. So one of the things that I found, I mentioned in, in earlier videos, uh, and this is just regular um, drywall uh, putty or um, drywall compound, but uh, I really like using these screens, these sanding screens better than anything else. Um, they last you way longer than sandpaper. They do a lot quicker job um, and they, they don't get clogged up. So there's different screen sizes or grits you can get. And obviously you wanna start with your heaviest and go to your finest, but I usually just pick one in the middle and, and go from there. Um, but they work really well and uh, make quick work of the uh, of uh, sanding down, especially large areas. And I never buy the the pads for these or put it on a block of wood or anything like that. I find that you know just using it right on your hand and being able to feel the high spots, and you can use your fingers as you're sanding to kind of press on those higher spots. I can focus in on just a little spot where I can use all my fingers to do a kind of a, and the, my whole palm really, to do a whole flat spot. So for me, you get a lot better control out of something like this and it's a lot cheaper to use. So I highly recommend these uh, sanding screens, but we're just about done with all the sanding and the girls made good work of everything here. And so we're just gonna clean up and get ready to paint. Um, I've got everything uh, filled in as, as best as possible and kind of sanded off. Uh, we did, uh, I did go around with a wet t-shirt um, and a uh, wet rag, whatever you have around. Um, I also use socks a lot of times and put it right on my hand, get it wet, and then just go around and kind of rub all the surfaces down. It works really well. So you want to get any dust and dirt off of anything. And so I've got it as, as clean as we're going to get it here and we're ready to start priming. Now, whenever I do any surfaces that are um, I guess just as this says, kind of porous, or we're doing it on like bare drywall repairs or anything like that, like on the ceiling, and I've already done all the walls and stuff in here. Um, I, I do like to do primer. Um, this is way cheaper than doing two coats of paint on everything or three coats of paint to get it to really cover well. And so you can get some cheap primer and uh, run that on everything, one or two coats of this, and then most of the time you can get away with just one good coat of a good paint. And we'll talk about that, uh, what paint we're using here too. So, you ready to get started? All right, so we're just using pretty basic stuff here. Um, I always save old rollers um, for primer and the undercoats, it doesn't really matter. 
uh, how perfect it is and this stuff goes on really thin so uh, it doesn't doesn't really matter too much uh, what you're using and so I'll use a new roller with our final coat of paint but we're using some old stuff here so we'll pour this in and get to work All right, priming is done. So it's looking pretty good in here. Um, nice thin coat of, of cover on everything here so the, the next coat of paint won't soak in so much. Uh, I think it should cover very nicely. So what I'm using, uh, remember how I said I was gonna use a nice new clean roller for the final coat? Well, I don't have one with me and today I need to get this done. So uh, I'm using reused rollers here, uh, which I'm fine with, uh, reused brushes. Now, one thing I did, I have found about brushes is you can buy the cheap brushes, um, but you're probably going to throw them away. Uh, if you want to buy the more expensive brushes, like this one's been used for years, and it's, you can tell. Um, but this was probably a $20 brush. Um, so the, the more expensive brushes, I do generally like the wooden handles, but um, this one's a plastic handle, which I happen to have. But uh, it makes a big difference on how long they're going to last you. Um, I'm a big fan of, of reusing things as long as I can and not uh, just buying cheap junk and throwing it out. So uh, that, that makes a big difference. I use these rollers too as many times as I possibly can before they just fall apart. I have used and tried over the last uh, few years different brands of paint, cheap paint, more expensive paint, stuff from Ace Hardware, stuff from Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, Walmart. Um, and Without a doubt, this bare marquee, this is, I don't know, probably the most expensive paint. Um, it, this is a, just awesome. Um, it is kind of a primer and paint in one. Um, this is just pure white, so there's no mixing, no color to this. It's just a white paint. That's what uh, she wanted in here. But I can tell you, you, you go ahead and spend 10 bucks less a gallon, and you're gonna end up putting two coats on. Um, I'm thinking that with the cheap primer we put on here, plus this really good um, cover paint, we should be good with one coat. Um, I bought a super expensive paint from Ace Hardware before. I think it was Velspar or whatever they had. It was supposed to be you know one coat guaranteed, and I put that stuff on, and it didn't even cover you know white. So uh, I would spend the extra money on the paint and save yourself a whole lot of time, and the end product's going to look a lot better. So well, I think we're ready to to get started. The hardest part was painting all these squares. It takes a long time, but uh, I've got some help today. So let's uh, get the paint poured in here and get started.
All right, well, this is pretty much the, the finished paint job. Um, there's a few spots that we need to touch up. Um, that, old, uh, that old brush I was using uh, turned out to be uh, probably past its usefulness and it was actually um, leaving a lot of streaks and stuff in the paint. So we switched out to a, a newer, nicer brush um, to try to cover up some of that. But you can see some of the spots where we trimmed in with that brush that there's some streaks and stuff. But um, this paint covers really well. Um, the one coat on everything is, is gonna do it. Uh, I think with the exception of just those few trim spots, uh, the door definitely needs a second coat. Anytime you put on a glossy, uh, that, that's a real high gloss finish on these doors, uh, the paint doesn't stick really well. So uh, we'll obviously need to go over um, this and do a second coat on the door. Um, I've got new hinges to put in, a new doorknob, uh, new switch covers and new switches actually because those are dimmers and they don't work with a lot of the LEDs and we don't need dimmers in here. Uh, but everything turned out pretty well. Uh, a lot of painting, two gallons of paint for this little room because of all these cubbies. I mean, that's a, you know, that, think about it, that's two sheets of plywood right there. So that's, that's almost an entire another wall, um, plus all the space up here on top and then also underneath of this. So there was a lot to paint in here with the addition of the, um, with the loft. So the next step is, is flooring. And then we're gonna get into uh, electrical. I've gotta move some outlets and put in some switches and stuff like that for lighting underneath here. So we'll do that in a separate video. Um, but this is, uh, this is pretty much how it turned out. We're real happy with it. Uh, painting is one of my least favorite things. So it's always nice to get the family involved here and <laughs> uh, have them help me out. So, so that's it for this uh, the painting video. Fairly quick, uh, quick video here. Um, not a whole lot of content, but I just wanted to take you guys along for each step of the way. Um, if you're a professional painter, uh, I do apologize because I am not, and I'm sure there's a lot of things that uh, um, you, uh, you know, expert tips and stuff like that that you guys uh, have experience with that I don't. I really would love to hear that stuff. So put that stuff down below, uh, and that encourages you guys that are viewing. You know, check through those comments because a lot of people, there's a lot of whole, there's a lot of smart people out there. A lot of people that have done a lot more uh, with this type of thing than me. And uh, when we get that feedback and you get that whole community involved. Um, you really can get a whole lot of great ideas. So I'd love to hear from you guys if you, if you have some tips or tricks um, for me and, and for everyone else as well. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.